Thank you for watching Back Porch Wisdom with Pastor Rob Wynn. We pray that this weekly broadcast will be a blessing to you. And now here is Pastor Rob Wynn with today's message. I want to welcome you to Back Porch Wisdom. And today my message is going to be about nothing but God. It's important in uh, walking with God that you have your focus on Him and you know that you can become one with Him. Uh, my text is out of uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 and I want to start reading from verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. According as His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to His glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now in 2 Corinthians 4, I want to make a point of this to start off with. Is, is that the Apostle Paul said that he had, we have a, the same like precious faith as he does. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, he says that there's a spirit of faith. And so we want to grasp a hold of the spirit of faith that comes from God. And, and we want to run with it. You know, actually, a spirit of faith is not necessarily taught, but it's caught. And so, many times in the Bible, or to me, most of the time, when you're interpreting Scripture by, by Scripture, then you need to realize that the Bible needs to be accepted, not as much as interpreted. And so... My first point I want to make is there's nothing greater than God. In other words, you find the will of God. You know, many times they say, well, if you read the front of the book, if you read the last of the book, you can find out what the author is really all about, what this story is all about. And so when you look in the, in the book of Genesis 1 chapter, and chapter 2 and chapter 3, you find in chapter 1 that in ver around verse 26 that he said that uh, he wanted to make man in his image and in his likeness. And that he wanted to give him dominion over the, the, the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and over every creeping thing. And then you find in the second chapter where he's, he's formed man out of the dust of the earth. And then he breathed into him the breath of life. And, and that then, then, once he had prepared the garden, he put man into the garden. He had food to eat. He had water to drink. He had, a, he had a, uh, an employment. He told him to guard and keep the garden. And so, in other words, 
the garden actually typifies the peaceful and abundant life that God intended for His children to have. And then you find in, in, the, in the third chapter where Adam and Eve had already been created out of Adam. And, and then you find where Adam allowed Eve to be deceived by the devil. And he was supposed to uh, uphold God's Word. Listen, in chapter 2 it said he'd given him faith. And really, he, he said so much faith that he was name, able to name every creature that God put before him. And so Adam had the faith to, to keep the devil at bay and to not let him do what deceive his wife, but he did it anyway. And then man fell, and then you find that he tells them what's going to happen to him, but the, what I want to point out is he immediately told the devil and, and all of the universe that he's got a son coming. And this son is going to uh, crush the head of the devil and the devil's only going to be able to bruise his heel. And then you find God that he prepared a sacrifice and sacrifice uh, with blood and he brought Adam and Eve back into union with him. So the point I'm making is Without the devil entering in and taking, taking authority, there would be no chaos. God is not in control of this world. But you, you know it because there's killing, stealing, destroying. And Jesus said that was what the devil did in John 10.10. 10. And then in John 10.10, 10, the other part, he says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's exactly what you found in the garden. And then you find in Revelations chapter... 21 that uh, what's going to happen when Jesus comes back and let me read it to you real quick starting in verse 1 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there shall what there was no more sea and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he, shall, he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and he himself shall be their God, and they shall, he shall be their God. So you find, and then it goes on to say that there's going to be no crying, no, no turmoil. And so I'm going to stop right there for today, but I want you, I, I want to thank you for tuning in to Back Porch Wisdom. And this has been Pastor Rob Wynn. I'm from Cornerstone Church. But I want to give an invitation right now. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, you're backslidden, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is Lord and that you raised Him from the dead so that I'd be saved. Right now, I believe I've become righteous with my heart. And I have confessed Jesus with my mouth, and now I'm saved. I'm your child. I'm no longer a child of the devil. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're ever in the Linden, Alabama area, we invite you to worship with us at Cornerstone Church. For more information and other resources, visit our website at cornerstonechurchforyou.com. Hi, I'm Pastor Rob Wynn from Cornerstone Church in Linden, Alabama. I wanted to tell you today what our service times are so you can come. It's at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning and at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday evenings. We wanted to reveal our heart to you, which is that we love Linden and we love Marengo County and the areas around us. And we have a message that we want to get out. It's a message of hope, help, and healing. And if you'd like to find out more about us, you can find out on our website, which is cornerstonechurchforyou.com. You can find out directions to our church, the address. You can find out what we believe. You can hear messages that Rose and I have preached. And you can give if you'd like to give. But most of all, 
I wanted to make sure that I invited you, that no matter who you are, we want to have you come and be a part of Cornerstone Church in Linden.